The plot thickens. Where is me a coin? Me a coin. Aha! That coin. Alright. You got anything for me? Give me a puzzle. He didn't give me a puzzle last time. Yo, Professor, did you find what you were after? Never mind that, though. I've got something more important to talk about. Namely, chocolate. Help me solve this puzzle and I'll tell you something I bet you'll find very interesting. Here we go. Chocolate puzzle. You have a hankering for chocolate, so you buy a huge sheet of 30 chocolate squares. The sheet is 5 squares long by 6 squares wide. You can only break the chocolate at the lines that run between squares, and you aren't allowed to stack multiple segments on top of each other. Keeping those rules in mind, what is the fewest number of times you'll need to break the chocolate in order to separate each of the 30 squares? Okay, so I can draw. What is the fuse number of time you need to break the chocolate in order to separate each of the 30 chocolate squares? Hmm. This one is fairly easy, but also complicated. So the simple answer here, which is not the answer because it's never the simple answer, is we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we have six, seven, eight, nine. And that would release all of the chocolates at nine. But it's probably more crazy than that. Can't stack them on top of each other. That rules any shenanigans on that. Um, oh, is that a thing, though? Okay, so humor me for this one, all right? Let's say we cut this down the middle, all right? Then we move this part to this part. So like not on top, but like, you know, aligned with this top part here. And then we break it one, two. Okay, well, then we have a bunch of lines there. All right, then How do we get it so that we break all six of those lines in the fewest amount of breaks? Um, we could line them up. We could, um, so then we could go we line it up lengthwise. Which means we would be looking at this side. Kinda kinda difficult to picture. But then we break, we would break it here, and we would break it here. Uh, 
No, that that wouldn't that wouldn't work. Draw it on paint. I could uh, I could do something like that. Hmm. Sure. Let's do something like that. Let's uh, open up Friendly Neighborhood Photoshop. Right. Over here. Go ahead and uh, do something like that. All right, we have our chocolates here. Uh, duplicate that one more time. All right, so what I want to do is I want to take these Why is that not... That is so strange. Why is that appearing over there? Whatever. Alright, so we have our chocolate here. Okay, and so what I want to do is I want to stack these on top of each other. That's my first break. Okay. Then I want to break these together. So uh, we could just use one as an example. All right, so what the heck? Alright, so then we have these ones. We've got three of them. Alright, and so what I want to do is I want to rotate all of them. way and then keeping in mind that I still have I guess three more so I guess this way wouldn't wouldn't work this way wouldn't work so we would have to keep it this way and we still have another one along the side so we will keep it like that means I don't need to break them into individual pieces. Could keep it like so. So if we were to keep it like that, that would still be a ton of breaks. Which wouldn't really help out. I feel like I feel like I'm onto something with this though. I feel like I'm onto it. Cause that's one break and then Oh What if What if instead of stacking this on top what if I turned it like that? No, that wouldn't work either. Wait, they have to be single bits? They do have to be single bits. Ugh. 
that they do. Wouldn't that make it 29? Twenty-nine breaks? We should be able to do it in less than twenty-nine breaks. Because I, I I could do it with nine breaks right here. Just like default. So there has to be a way to do it with less than nine breaks. But they have to be single pieces. Well, right. So, like, if I were to do the break here, um, for example, I will draw. Okay, with nine breaks, I can break it here. That's one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that would give me all individual pieces with nine breaks. Not necessarily? So if we break them all like this... Because you would have to break each bit... singly? I'm not sure what you mean, after cutting across the way? Well, well no, because I could just... I can cut right here, and then these are all singles. And then... I just repeat that for each one of those. So like, nine... Nine is, I guess, like, the base. I have to try to get less than nine. Which is, which is why I was going this route, which was not working at all. Are our chocolates? Um, and I feel like the hints are going to be like, oh, you know, you can't stack them on top of each other, but you can move the chocolates so that they're parallel to each other, blah, blah, blah. So. Um. So that's break one. If I do that here, and we have two really long strips. Then I can break it. So if I break it here, that's two, three, and then four, five, six, seven. That's seven breaks. What are the hints? We could take a look at the hints. Uh, I like how my timer restart. Uh, it's common for people to start thinking about the way they need to break the chocolate in order to achieve the objective at hand. However, the truth is that no matter how you break the chocolate, the answer you arrive at will always be the same. It will be the same. You arrive at will be the same. That doesn't make any sense. 
I just broke it in seven tries, and I broke it in nine tries. Keeping those rules in mind, what is the fewest number of times you'll need to break the chocolate in order to separate each of the 30 chocolate squares? Twenty-nine? Oh... Checked by a huge sheet. You only break the chocolate at the lines that run between the squares and you aren't allowed to stack multiple segments on top of each other. All right, I'm going to put in 29. I personally don't think it's 29. I think it's a much smaller number than that. But if you got this, you got this. Here we go. Luke, here's my answer. All right, you're going to have to explain that one. Or the game is going to have to explain that one. That's right. If you follow the rules set out in the puzzle, then it really doesn't matter how you break up the chocolate. The number of segments you have to you have increases by one each time you break a chunk off the sheet. You start with one segment of chocolate, so it breaks later. You have 30 segments. Or so 29 breaks later you have 30 segments. Can't break more than one at once. I guess I was reading the puzzle differently then. Because that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Unless it's counting breaks. Like, it's counting each individual break rather than the chunk breaks, I guess? Which would be a really messed up way of, of puzzling this out. Because, because like, I did it in, in, in seven breaks, but if you're counting how many chocolates break in those breaks, then sure. That's a messed up puzzle. Now it makes sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, now about that hot info I promised. If you want to experience the best dining in Saint Mystery, you've got to check out Fruton's Restaurant. Everything he makes is yummy. Don't even get me started on the stews. You have to try it yourself. World map? Learn your geography. Okay. You're much smarter than I am, stalemate. I applaud you, sir. Or madam. Give me coins. Ahem, you there. Yes, you. You mean me, good sir. Yep, you. This flower vase is yours, right? I've been keeping it nice and safe for you. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. Never seen anyone just forget something like this while shopping. You're a, uh, you're a vase space case. Har har. I'm sorry, but you must be mistaken. I've never seen that vase before in my life. What? This fancy vase doesn't belong to you? So why'd that guy tell me to give this to you? Hmm? What does this man look like? Well, my hat has a way of obscuring certain details from me. It's the worst, I tell you. Back to the issue at hand. Mystery man wasn't a regular around here, that's for sure. Don't sweat it, though. I'll just give it back to the guy next time I see him. So speaking of flower vases, I know a puzzle I bet you'd like. Not a hard one or anything, but it's the least I could do for bothering you about the vase. Ten picarettes? Ten picarettes. Okay. Someone knocked over this or this fabulous vase and shattered it. 
Fit the pieces together and restore the vase to its original shape. There's one catch though. Mixed in with the pieces is a single piece different from the vase. What a jerk. Hmm. Here's my answer. I guess that's a I 10 pick ramp puzzle for you? Just absurdly easy? Good job, repairing the vase wasn't much of a challenge, was it? Oh, if only fixing things in real life were this simple. Seems too easy? That did seem a little too easy. You got a good head on your shoulders, I'm impressed. By the way, you sure don't want to take some fresh sausage home with you? Believe me, these are some links you don't want to be missing. <laughs> no, thank you. We're just fine. Too bad. Not to bur uh, bust your chops or anything, but that deal was a one-time offer. Maybe you'd, uh, you'd have said yes if you knew what was at stake. I think we're done here, Luke. <laughs> Couldn't agree more, Professor. This guy. This beef jokes. Alright, we'll get to that Thing on the ground here in a second. Hey. Alright, what do we have here? Kind of lout just throws trash on the ground. I'm going to pick it up. <laughs> An old newspaper. Honestly, you'd think that everyone would know that trash goes in the wait a second. You have to come take a look at this article. Oh, would you look at that? It seems to be Inspector Chelmy. Look at that. Chelmy hailed as brilliant detective and devoted husband. Chelmy hailed as brilliant detective and... Or devoted. Devoted. Devoted husband. Chelmy celebrates each successful case with his favorite treat. His wife's sweet potato fritters. Wow, who saw that one coming? He's so gruff that I never imagined he had a soft side like that. Just look at that old grump grinning over his plate of sweet potato fritters. I knew he was fussing over nothing when he said he hated sweets back at Reinhold Manor. Hmm, that's right, Luke, he did say that. How very curious. Very curious indeed. You got for me, man. So is it true that I'm uh, what I'm hearing about the two of you? Are you really running about town in search of the Reinhold fortune? That's correct, sir. Currently, we're in search of a close friend of the Baron Reinhold's. We believe he has entrusted this friend with an important note. Gracious, that's quite a search you have on your hands. Oh, excuse me, my name is Archibald. Gus, I mean. The Baron and I were great friends, thick as thieves. We used to have the most amazing conversations late into the night. Do you think that perhaps I am the one you're searching for? Yes, I think so. What luck that after all this searching, we should bump into you in a place like this. I have one question. Do you recall ever receiving a small note or written message from the Baron? Hmm, no, I don't re remember ever receiving anything of the sort from Gus. But he did give me a fine desk that once belonged to him. It's at my home. Maybe it holds some kind of clue. The Baron's desk, you say? Excellent. Would you like to come over to my house and take a look at it? You are most gracious. If you would be kind enough to allow us to look at it, we would be very grateful. I'm sure Gus wouldn't mind two fine puzzle lovers such as yourselves looking over his desk. Actually, let me impart a few pearls of wisdom on you while I've got your attention. Focusing on your case is all well and good, but if you don't solve some puzzles, you'll be sorry later. So make an effort to find puzzles around town and just solve the ones you can. Take it from this old timer, it's good to stop and smell the puzzles sometimes. Alright, let's get off 
my high horse now. Let's fall over to my... something, something, go to my house. This is Gus's old desk. Take all the time you need to examine it. Splendid, Luke. Let's get right to it. <clears throat> We're going to investigate the rest of your house first. Look, Professor, there's a hidden puzzle here. Hidden puzzles everywhere. Not nuts. Uh-oh. For myself some more eggnog. All right. In front of you are four tangled lengths of rope. Mark the ones you think will form a knot when you grab them by their ends and pull them taut. This one is uh, not for me. <clears throat> okay. Mark the ones you think will form a knot. Grab them. Um, it's not C. I don't even know what... I can't even tell what's going on with C. Um... Oh! I see how it's it's doing that. Okay, so... could actually be C. Hmm. Okay, C... C looks like a knot to me. D does not look like a knot to me. A what I would do for a shoelace right now. sure on A, but I think this one goes into a knot. Uh, D... D does not look like a knot to me. So C and A are my, my immediate choices here. I just need to decide if a looks good, and if I'm locking in C. This is a 50 picker at one. So it's tougher than it seems. So let's use a hint coin. It's difficult to work out all the tangles and turns of a rope in one glance. You'll have better luck if you keep the shape of a simple knot in mind and inspect each part of the rope individually. That's not helpful at all. That's definitely not um, B either. Okay, so when I'm thinking of creating a knot, you have to put it in one of the loops. So in the case of C, 
and it goes like this, and it goes into that loop right there. And I'm guessing this goes under that? It's kind of hard to tell. I originally thought like this looped in like that, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so... I feel like this one wouldn't work out either. They're both very similar, except they're actually exactly the same, except this part goes above that one, and this one, I guess, is below. Gonna head off. Have a good one, Stalemate. Thanks for stopping by. And thanks for uh, hanging out with the raid. Um... Go ahead and spend another one. Take a look at rope B. If you start from the right end of the rope and examine the first loop you encounter, you'll notice that the two strands of rope are just lying on top of each other. The same goes for the loop on the left side of the rope. There's no way this rope will knot up. All right, I had gotten that. Maybe, oh, maybe this is going like in between them. That might be what it is. And if it's going in between them, I don't think it would not. I'm gonna go with A. Thanks for the follow, Taste Likes Apples. I think I've got it. Apples have a great taste to them. Yep, okay. Figures as much. I was sure I right, again, take a look at each rope. Go ahead and uh, unlock the last one. Only one of the four ropes will actually not when pulled up from both ends. Rope B is already out, so which one will you choose? Well, it's gotta be C. I was really gonna choose A and B, so this uh, helps. <clears throat> Good job. The only thing you need to do to solve this puzzle is look at it. However, the images themselves are complicated, so it's easy to get confused. It would be fun to test all the various configurations with actual pieces of rope. I was going to do that if I had the rope. Ooh, that puzzle was no pushover. This show wasn't. 